Auto Systems Training. I uh, hope you're enjoying these videos. We're still in air brakes. Uh, basic pneumatic air brake system continued. This is LSTV-037. 37 videos out there on YouTube. Go out and check them out. Tell your friends. Learn from it. Apply it if you get the chance. Okay, we're going to do a review today on our review. Like I said, every class we're going to do with air brakes, we're going to do a review. Remember that Big Mac, two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun? That's how we're going to learn it. Way cool. So, the difference this time is I'm not going to give you the functions, nor am I going to give me the functions. I'm going to give you about five seconds to tell me what the name of the, the proper name of the component is, or you can tell yourself that. Then I'm going to give you my definition of it, which means it's not going to be word for word or exact. So don't call me or don't email and say, you missed a few words here and there. I'm not worried about that. I just want to make sure we get the essence of what the, the name of the component is by visual identification and the function of that component. Okay? All right. So without any further ado, here we go. First component is, and I'll give you five seconds. Okay, the proper name for this component, ladies and gentlemen, is the dead engine cutout cock. That's that little valve right there identified by that yellow arrow right there. And the purpose of that is when that valve is open and the unit is DIT, dead in train, it allows me to flow brake pipe air. Remember, the locomotive is dead. There's no air in the main reservoirs or anything. It will allow me to charge the number two main reservoir from brake pipe, which is at 90 pounds. With the automatic brake valve handle release of the lead unit or the lead car or whatever whatever air brake pipe source we're having. And it'll allow this to charge up to whatever this pressure setting is inside this Schrader bellows or watch regulator. Opening that valve opens up the dead engine feeder. Okay? So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Dead engine cutout cock. Boom, let's go to the next one. All right, five seconds. All right, there's three components there, ladies and gentlemen. Put all of them together, that's called the 26F control valve. Now, I'm going to tell you what that is later on as we break all three components down. Okay? So that's the name of it. I'm going to get to the function a little bit later of each part. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, five seconds. Here we go. Okay, did you come up with the right answer? This is a control stand display. Now, as you can see, I have an air gauge, what they call a duplex gauge or an analog gauge. It means it has needles on them. Digital would be numbers. This is analog, okay? It's got needles. I've got one gauge, duplex gauge, and duplex means two. Do means two. So I have two needles in one gauge, and over here to the right, or center in this one, I have, it's a duplex gauge as well, uh, two needles, Okay, two different functions. And on the right, far right, I have an airflow indicator. It says uh, CFM or AFM airflow method. That's what we use to measure the amount of air flowing th through the brake pipe or through the train. Okay, that's what that gauge does. The purpose of an analog gauge is to display air pressure in PSI. And PSI stands for per square inch. In this case, if I had a uh, main reservoir at 42 pounds, like it's showing right there, that'd be 42 PSI. Same thing with uh, the white needle on the left, which is equalizing reservoir. It's pumping up from zero. It would be about 40 pounds per square inch in that circuit. Same thing over here with brake pipe. Remember, we did that one class. Equalizing is the boss. Brake pipe follows it. If equalizing goes up, brake pipe goes up. If equalizing goes down, brake pipe goes down. What was one exception to the rule? An emergency. Very good. That's the only, that's the only air brake condition where brake pipe does not follow equalizing reservoir. Very good. Okay, so three gauges, two are to deal with different pressures, main reservoir pressure, equalizing reservoir pressure, brake cylinder pressure, and brake pipe pressure, and that one deals with brake pipe flow only. So you have to have indication of what the uh, air brake system is doing, and that's your interface with it. We use the computer term. Cool. All right, let's move on. All right, five seconds. Here we go. White needle right there is pointing this little bitty box. Yep, the correct answer to that, ladies and gentlemen, is called the branch pipe filter. 
the branch pipe filter. Remember I told you write the piece of paper vertically BP equals BP? Well, brake pipe equals a branch pipe, or branch pipe equals brake pipe. So the only air inside that little container or housing is orange air, otherwise known as brake pipe. Now, this, this is the branch pipe coming right off of here, and I got a little valve here. And notice this little arrow cast in right into the housing right there. Got a little arrow flow showing flow going that way in through and out of it, going up to a that 26F control valve. Okay. Inside that 26F control valve. There are 11, 5, 10, 11 different chokes and orifices, and some are very, very tiny, extremely tiny. Uh, and it doesn't take much dirt to plug those up, which could affect the operation a little bit or even a whole bunch, or not, not let the valve work at all. So it deserves that extra bit of filtration. And what did I talk about in the last class? You make sure that when you take that filter out, and first of all, you shouldn't be using an impact. You know, if you are, well, good luck with that. Um, but I always use hand tools. Anyway, take those three bolts or four bolts out, take the, take the filter out, have a new replacement filter, make sure inside the housing is clean. Take that filter, it has a little centering effect inside that housing. You put the new square seal, most of them are square seal, on that cover. And then what you do, you put that cover on where that filter is, and you actually raise that filter up a little bit and compress that housing until you start all the bolts. And that way it Properly aligns that filter inside that filter housing. If you don't do that right, you're letting dirty unfiltered air get in there, and you're just destroying that that uh, those components. Okay, branch pipe filter very important. So go to the next one, and it, let me help you out. That includes this guy, this guy, and another component that you can't see right here. Five seconds. Just come up with the end. This is the dead engine feature, ladies and gentlemen. I have a dead engine cutout cock right here. I have a Schrader bellows or a watch regulator right here. In this case, it's a Schrader bellows. And if you follow that line, that where that line goes around that way, it will go to a one-way check valve. And this, ladies and gentlemen, will be a three-component dead engine feature. Uh, cutout cock, dead engine cutout cock, uh, watch regulator, or Schrader bellows regulator. Taking that 90 pounds of brake pipe, dropping it down to 31 to 40 depending on the unit and what that regulator is set at, and also a one-way check valve further downstream. Okay. The dead engine feature is the three components that allow, the, that, that allow that locomotive to be set up where it runs as a loaded boxcar. Okay. That's what those three components do. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, five seconds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom, boom. Well, just kind of humming the theme song to Jeopardy a little bit. This, ladies and gentlemen, is called an A19 flow adapter. And see, that's an easy one because the word or the number 19 just happens to be the, the orifice size inside this, this component. It's called an A19 flow adapter that has a 1964 orifice in this one inch line. And what it does, it's in the main line of res, main reservoir, but this is the line that goes up to the automatic brake valve that goes down and feeds brake pipe. So we restrict the, the maximum amount of, not pressure that goes through, but the maximum amount of volume that goes through for when we build a brake pipe pressure in the relay valve of the automatic brake valve. That's this guy's job, he restricts it. Okay, move on to the next one. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, uh, they're slow seconds. All right. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is an SA26 independent brake valve. If you remember from the last several reviews, SA stands for what? That's right, straight air. That means air brakes, you move this handle from, from the release position right here all the way over anywhere in the application zone. That's air brakes, boom, win right now, boom. As opposed to the other brake valve that kind of takes its time to get us that signal. Straight air, pipe 20, independent brake valve. Okay, just and the, and the, of course, this brake valve only goes to the components, air brake components of the locomotives. This component does not send a signal out to the box cars. This component only sends a signal out to the locomotives only, and it's a, it's responsible for pressurization and release of two pipes: pipe 20, which is independent application and release, and pipe 13 when you push the handle down. That's main reservoir pressure going out 13 to all the different valves, which we'll talk about later, okay? SA independent, 
SA26 <laughs> independent brake valve. Easy for me to say. Again, the most important thing, two pipes. Pipe 20 and pipe 13. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I'm going to give you five seconds here. Ready? Here we go. All right, look at this little yellow arrow right here. It's got this handle. Well, we now know that it's in the brake pipe or the branch pipe. This is called a branch pipe cutout cock. And as you can see, it's cast iron. It's a rather sturdy valve. Okay. And let's say you got, you're on the main line or you're somewhere important where you have to do something up there in that control valve, whatever the case may be. So instead of draining all that low, isolating that one locomotive and cutting all the air out and then charging it all back up, you can still be turning this valve closed, which would take this little line here. It would now be this way, right here, it'd be up and down. It's on the ball valve and it would block that flow right here. And then allow you to go up there and work on the branch pipe filter or anything upstream or downstream of that part of that branch. 26F control valve and the components thereof. You want me to name those components for that. I'm not going to do it yet. All right, so branch pipe cutout cock. It just either opens or closes, restricts, or eliminates the air going from the branch pipe and just holds it in that, that position until you're done with the maintenance. Then you cut it back in. Give it a few minutes to charge up, boom, you're ready to go. And if it works right, down the road you go. All right, branch pipe cutout clock. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the next one. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right, the answer to this valve, ladies and gentlemen, is a 26C automatic brake valve. Uh, you've seen it in a lot of movies, you know, where the engineers are taking that handle and ratcheting it back and forth. That's not how they do that in real life. Just sorry to tell you that, but that's not. No, no. Okay. Okay. It's got a handle. And remember, we never, ever, ever identify a valve by the color of the handle. I've seen these black. I've seen these white. I've seen these cast iron. I've seen these with different colors of rubber on them. You never go by the color of the handle to determine the kind of type of valve. You look at the valve itself. Okay. <clears throat> 26C automatic brake valve. It controls... Equalizing reservoir inside the valve, 26 feet long, which controls brake pipe, which can be several miles long. Okay, so the little guy is is controlling the big guy. Okay, um, <clears throat> this guy provides increases and decreases of equalizing reservoir pressure, which provides increases and decreases of brake pipe pressure which goes down lower to the control valve, and the control valve responds in kind. If brake pipe goes up, brake cylinder goes down. If brake pipe goes down, brake cylinder comes up. Just opposite, okay? And we've also known the thing to be a brake pipe regulator, okay? Starting from where we are to the left, moving the handle into the application zone, which is this area right in here, okay? What that does is that reduces equalizing, which in turn reduces brake pipe. And then we reduce brake pipe, control valve says, this guy wants brakes. I know it seems a little haywire, but just go with it. I remember what I told you earlier. If you're not getting it, just go over it a few times. It will come. It's like Christmas. It's coming. Okay? All right. Let's go to the next valve, please. Oh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, I'm going to wait. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. Boom. All right. The name of this, ladies and gentlemen, is the... J1616 relay valve. There's all kinds of different J relay valves, but there's three types. Let me explain that to you. There's non-multiplying, which means that this is a J1. It have a lot smaller filling piece right here. It have one diaphragm. 45 pounds in, let's say independent circuit. 45 pounds in, 45 pounds out. We didn't multiply anything. Same, same non-multiplying, that'd be a J1. But here we have a J1616. Now, you, you can't read it there, but I can barely make it out. That means one, 45 pounds in, 45 times 1.6. So you have two diaphragms. You have a 100% diaphragm. So 45 times 45 is 100, which would be 45. 45 times 100% is 45. Let me get that straight. 60% of 45 pounds would be 27. You take 45 and 27, add them together. The output of this guy would be... 72 pounds. Remember what I told you before from the last couple of classes. 
Whatever you're going to go on, you get on a locomotive. You've got to drop that door down to find out what kind of J relay valve you have so you know what kind of out expected out pressures or pressures you're going to have in the brake cylinder if that valve's working right. If you don't know what valve you have, how do you know what, whether it's working right or not? You might have a J14. Whoa, that'd be a, that'd be a multiplying down valve. But anyway, a J1, uh, 414, 616, 818, J200 are all valves that are multiplying up. Okay, J14, J16, J48, J84B, all those are taking the signal and multiplying it down. In other words, the output of that valve is less than the input pressure coming in for older style equipment, which we've already talked about. So a J relay valve is a responding valve. It responds to either pipe 20 or pipe 16, whichever has a greater pressure. Okay, and it predicts a large volume of air. Remember, I got main reservoir under this cap right here, and that's the air that sends that air out to the, to the brake cylinders. Not pipe 20 and not pipe 16. Their end of their run ends right in here. Okay, this is where brake cylinder air is created. This is where brake cylinder air is exhausted. Oh, and also, I don't know if I mentioned it before in the last class or the last several, I'm going to mention it now. Any air that's created in a valve will exhaust, it, the, will exhaust the air in which the valve in which it was created. Brake cylinder air is created in this valve. Brake cylinder will exhaust at this valve, not the brake cylinders. Cool? All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, five seconds on the clock. Okay, time's up. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a P2A brake application valve. Okay, if you ever watched hockey, you'll know what happens when the guys or players do something bad, they put them in a penalty box. Well, that's kind of like what this does with the locomotive. Uh, it works off of an overspeed condition, it works off a crew alerter. If the engineer is incapacitated and is in trouble, he can't react to that. This guy will react for him. Uh, coded cab signal, if you have that kind of territory, automatic train control. For that kind of territory, of course, everybody, you have probably already heard about positive train control that's coming out, and it's kind of already out, but that's a huge, massive protection set, uh, uh, vigilance system designed to, to take care of that train and shut it down in the event of any type of uh, problem that's going on with the train. Um, it does two things. provides a penalty brake application and activates a PC switch. So when, if you're looking at that control stand, somewhere on there, you'll see a little red light and it'll say PCS. That stands for uh, power cutoff switch. Power cutoff switch. And what that does, it does two things. It'll drop the load, so no longer will the generator uh, cause excitation, and it'll return the engine to idle. So you can grab a hold of that throttle, move it up and down all you want. With the PC light on, it's gonna go to idle and stay there. So what is this guy's job? What does he do? He, he reacts, it's a reactive valve, reacts to any kind of penalty, which I just mentioned a minute ago, and does two things. It will give you a penalty brake application, and it'll activate the PC switch. And when it activates the PC switch, it does, it'll drop the load and return the engine to idle. Okay? Okay, I'm gonna do the five second thing again. Ready? Okay, it's been a good five seconds. The answer to this is it's a, long, it's a small valve with a long name. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the A1 charging cutoff pilot valve. It's using the emergency circuit. Okay, this guy is used in the emergency circuit. When this valve is activated, three events occur. Number one, it'll, it'll, it'll give me a brake pipe will go to zero. Boom, instantly. Equal to or greater than, five, or equal to or greater than 900 feet per second. It'll also give me brake pipe charging cutoff. That brake pipe gauge goes to zero, and that valve makes sure that, that, equal, or that brake pipe goes to zero and stays at zero. And the third thing it does, it gives me one minute of emergency sand. So the three things this valve does, when, when, when he senses that an emergency is going on, brake pipe pressure drops to zero at emergency rate, um, activates the PC switch, but also uh, drops the load returns into the idle, uh, gives me one minute of emergency sand, but also on top of that, he also gives me the emergency brake application of 72 to 78 pounds of brake cylinder pressure. So let's, let's just go back. There's quite a few things it does different than the P2A. Okay, give me emergency brake application of 72 to 75. Brake pipe charging, charging cutoff goes to zero and remains at zero. Activates the PC switch, which drops the load, returns the engine to idle. Give me one minute of emergency sand. Okay, 
Oh, and when we have that brake pipe charging cut off, we also get audible blow on the cab, which is that really loud blow of air coming from inside the automatic brake valve. In case you're wondering what that is, you now know that's called audible blow. Okay, very busy valve, very reliable valve, A1 charging, cut off pilot valve. Okay, let's go to the next one. Mm -hmm. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1, 5, 1,000. 5, 1,000, I'm there. All right, the answer to this is a number 8 vent valve. This is located off a of branch here. As you can see, as the brake pipe comes over, does a 180. This guy has brake pipe above it and below it. But, but, but the way we do it in the air brakes, there's a diaphragm right here. And there's a long stem inside of here. And what happens is, is brake pipe will charge the air in this chamber. This air, even though it's brake pipe, we, we color code it purple for quick action chamber. So here's the cool part. This guy acts like a domino. And I remember one day I come out of my office and a train was going by right there in the main line, about 30 miles an hour. All of a sudden a brake pipe hose burst. Poof! And it was really cool because this is a, a pneumatic event that occurs. This, let's say this is the car where, where, the, where the brake hose burst. This guy's going to light off first. So boom! He lights off. And I'm going to turn my head a little bit and say that my train's going by this way. From the middle of that train, each one of these vent valves on every car in a serial action, which means this one lights off, this one lights off, this one lights off, this one lights off, this one. Okay? Like a dominoes, right? Boom. You've seen all these, all these kids where they'll go into these malls and they'll put tens of thousands of these dominoes out and they just touch one and it sets off a chain reaction. Well, that's exactly what we're doing here. This one lights off this and the, and the cool part was the signal went boom, 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 boom from the middle of that train to each end of the train, putting each car in emergency clipped to the lead locomotive. Now, what would happen if that, that thing let off, that number eight vent valve let off at the back of the train? Well, it would start at the back of the train and it would literally migrate all the way forward to the lead locomotive, putting each car in emergency as it went forward. But what if that emergency ha occurred near the front of the train? Same thing, it would start at the front of the train, it would go front and go boom, 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 all the way to the back. Serial action. All this guy cares about, he breathes. As, as brake pipe is reduced and as service or penalty rate, this diaphragm moves up and down and just breathes. But if brake pipe is sensed at an emergency rate, then each one of these lights off in a serial action. Number eight vent valve. Get rid of that brake pipe right now. Okay, boom, next one. Five seconds. Okay, the answer is double check valve. This guy right here. Okay, a double check valve. Remember, in the world of air brakes, might makes right. If I get 100 pounds on this side of that piston and 40 pounds here, who's going to win that battle? You have 100 pounds every time, okay? Remember, in the world of air brake, might makes right, okay? This valve allows interaction of two different air sources, whichever pressure is greater, without actually making contact, and the, the, the highest pressure wins, okay? So, I know that's not exactly what, I, what, the, what the official um, definition is. But this guy, if I got 100 pounds here and 40 pounds here, the 100 pounds is going to shove that piston over, shut it up, and allow the output air to go in and down there. Double check valve. Whatever pressure is greater, that's the side that's going to win, and that's going to get the output signal to it. Okay? Double check valve. Whoa! Guess what? I'd call that a pretty good review. Check your score. Send me an email. Give me a call. Let me know how this is working for you. Okay? So again, we're going to go over the... Uh, we're gonna go over the uh, uh, web address, that's www, and that is not a one. I know it looks like a one. I can't help it. That's just how Times New Roman looks at it. This is an L, letter L. www.lst hyphen, that's a dash, ca.com once again, www.lst-ca.com. Thank you very much. Have a safe day. We'll see you next time. Bye.